What is going on guys, it's Brooke coming to you once again with some three-dimensional anatomy, courtesy of anatomylearning.com. Now we're going to be looking at our final group of thigh muscles, the posterior thigh muscle group. And I have some great news for you guys, we only actually have three muscles in this group three muscles in this group. For the most part, you have two muscles on the medial side, and then one muscle with two parts on the lateral side. So I guess it would probably be smarter to consider these four muscles. Four muscles. We have the semi-tendinosis and semi-membranosis on the medial side, and then the biceps femoris long head and the biceps femoris short head on the lateral side but like all of these uh, muscles that we've seen so far because we have an origin at the pelvis crossing over into the femur we're probably going to be seeing some movement of the hip joints. You can remember um, that the biceps femoris is composed of two muscles by thinking, hey, well, these are the biceps by two. These all cross the knee joint, meaning that we're probably going to get some movement or influence on the movement of the knee joint. So what could these movements possibly be? Well, they're on the back. They're on the back, so you can imagine that they probably have, they're on the back of the pelvis, extending along the back of the femur, so you can probably guess that what this is going to do is it's going to pull this hip backwards. It's not going to pull it forward, it's not going to pull it inward, outward, it's going to pull it backward. And what action is that called? It's ex extension extension the gluteus maximus is the primary extensor of the thigh but these are also extensors of the thigh extensors remember the short head of the biceps femoris originates on the femur doesn't cross the hip joint meaning that it does not actually have that extensive property that extension property but it does cross the knee joint so along with all the other muscles, you can see that this actually flexes the knee. So for the semi-tendinosis, semi-membranosis, and the long head of the biceps femoris, they extend the hip. But for all four, including the biceps femoris short head, they flex the knee. And you can see how that is influenced by the location of these muscles and their insertion and origin points. Now, as always, we gotta give a quick shout out to the nervous aspect of these muscular group. And what we're gonna find is that they are all innervated by branches of the sciatic nerve. The sciatic nerve runs down the back of the leg and then branches off into two divisions called the tibial and fibular divisions. And what you're going to see is that usually when the muscle tears off so towards the lateral side, it's probably going to be innervated by the fibular division because the fibula is right here on the lateral side. And so all you really need to know is that the only muscle that's innervated by the fibular uh, division is the most lateral sort of muscle, which is the short head of the biceps femoris. The long head of the biceps femoris and the semitendinosis and semimembranosis are actually innervated by the tibial nerve, the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. Uh, one, one more thing you probably might have some trouble remembering is, well, which one's on top, the semitendinosis or the semimembranosis? The semitendinosis is on top and the semimembranosis is on the bottom. And the way I sort of memorize that is that I think, well, basement membrane. So if something is a basement membrane, then it's going to be on the bottom. So semimembranosis, basement membrane on the bottom. All right, and the origins in the, the 
insertions are pretty straightforward. You have the biceps femoris, both of them joining together to have this sort of same tendon attaching onto the fibula. So I guess that's um, a little bit, that's worth pointing out that the biceps femoris actually has its insertion point on the fibula. But the long head of the biceps femoris is innervated by the tibial nerve. Only the short head is innervated by the fibular. Mm. By the way, the semitendinosus is one of those three muscles, one from each of the thigh muscle groups that ends up attaching to the side of the tibia below the medial condyle. So the sartorius, the gracilis, and the semitendinosus. And they are all responsible for flexion, flexion of the knee. And that is really it for the posterior group. It's a very small group, relatively small group, and fairly easy to recall. Next up, we're gonna be looking at the muscles of the lower leg, or the crural muscles. The crural muscles. Divided into anterior, lateral, and posterior. So we're gonna have three groups of those muscles, just like we had three groups of thigh muscles. Hope you're excited, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care, guys.